Um, so yeah, thanks uh, everybody. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, we really wanted to focus on what we're seeing from the HID side um, as far as it relates to higher education. So I am the uh, end user business development manager uh, over here at HID uh, for higher ed. Um, I'm joined by one of my colleagues, Paul Russell, who's you know looks after um, RS2 and some of our other uh, strategic accounts, you know, here within HID. And just wanted to let you know what what's going on in the in the industry. Hopefully, answer some questions, and um, you know, see what type of projects you know you guys might be might be looking at. We really wanted to focus today on real time trends. So, obviously, schools are trying to figure out how to return to campus, what that's going to look like both from an aging infrastructure and looking at the future um, as they look at ways to secure taking advantage of opportunities so secure security talk technology in general uh, we're going to talk about cards and mobile at a high level along with, with some of the infrastructure needed to go along with that uh, talk about best practices what we're seeing higher education institutions do and and plan to to help address that and then you know have some q a answer any questions that everybody has um you know so i guess when we first look at higher education everyone's talking about reimagining the access control experience so you know whether that's a contactless card from a, a ceos or desfire um, or from a mobile platform, you know, using that card to basically do everything on campus, uh, time and attendance, physical access, access control, cashless options. I'm sure, you know, most of you are familiar with this type of uh, picture and terminology. But, you know, imagine a world, I say this in jest, but imagine a world where you use your phone for everything, you know, communication, food, Starbucks, shopping, etc. So imagine a student that's grown up with that technology, they get to campus, they can use their phone for pretty much everything outside of campus. And then now they're curious as to why they can't use it, you know, on campus, just like everywhere else. So we all know that's not a simple or an easy answer. However, students know that it's technically possible and, and they're beginning to demand it more and more. Um, so when we, but before we look there, we really got to look at the current state of the industry and some of the real time trends, because it's not as uh, simple as flipping a switch as, as many of you may know. So the status quo, this is the biggest thing that we've seen on higher education uh, institutions is the majority of the universities have diverse and outdated uh, physical access control credentials and most of which are not secure. So whether that's, you know, just MagStripe or Prox, uh, MyFair, iClass, you know, all the, some of the legacy technologies out there, 53% uh, continue to support MagStripe according to a survey uh, for higher, higher education security and IT leaders, 23 support Prox or a combination of the two. And then there's, you know, some high frequency technology, smart card technology in play. Um, you guys might be familiar, a siloed nature of, of institutions, you know, when you start talking about looking at op options to upgrade car technology, you know, who's responsible for that, what departments are involved, who makes those decisions, those type of things. These pictures on the screen, for I'm sure you've seen some of this, but these are Focus real on the prox and the MyFair side, but you know, duplicating cards, how easy it is to do uh, from some of the leg legacy technologies that offer no security or encryption, where it's pretty easy buy it buy a device thirty dollars off of Amazon. This device right here um, and clone cards. These copy and key locations used to be in hardware stores where they were doing physical you know physical keys. And now they've moved on into the to the low frequency cards and you know even even some of the key fobs so lots of vulnerabilities out there on campuses campuses are looking you know how do we upgrade this infra infrastructure 
The other biggest thing with legacy infrastructure is there's no path to mobile. And obviously mobile is a hot topic. I touched on it right there in the beginning, but 95% of the students already have smartphones. Mobile credential is ish issuance has risen uh, 400% in the last four years and 40% of the institutions rank mobile access as crucial to innovation. And uh, you know, this, this actual poll was pre COVID. So I think some of that, at least the last stat there would, will probably be adjusted. So universities must chart a course towards more secure and user-friendly access control landscape. I think the students are demanding it and pushing for that change. I mean, in the short term, this likely will mean a more complete embrace of smart cards and multi-technology readers, you know, offering flexibility to, to migrate over a period of years. And then, you know, long-term vision, universities looking at a mobile credential offering uh, to either complement the card or, you know, eventually maybe even replace the card. So when we talk about security technology and taking advantage of, of the opportunity, um, you know, the evolution of card technology, this is just a quick slide that talks about Magstripe 1970s, 1990 HID introduced, you know, the, HID, the, the PROX chip, lots of PROX still on campuses and PROX is used all around the world still. Um, it provides a, a great user experience, but as everyone knows that it's uh, there's no encryption, so the cards are easily duplicated and, cl and cloned. In 2000, uh, HID introduced iClass. Uh, 2010, or in 2008, MyFair was hacked. 2010, uh, there's papers discussed where legacy iClass was hacked. So some of the, the newer high frequency cards during that time, the algorithms and encryptions um, were starting to get hacked. In 2010, uh, HID, introduced iClass SE and the concept around SIO, which is a secure identity object, where basically it's wrapping, basically like an onion, another layer of protection, wrapping those credentials and digitally signing it and binding it to the card. Um, and then today you'll see CIOS and you also hear uh, MyFair does fire EV1 or EV2 as, as the latest and greatest card technology. Um, when you look at, we're going to talk touch on readers here in a minute. But when you look at when you look at the infrastructure from HID's side, one of the things that we like uh, to emphasize when you're looking at our our readers is our readers provide a lot of fle flexibility and choice. We, if you don't know what you're looking to upgrade to, far as a card or mobile technology. The good news is the reader can support both. So when you look at cardstock from MyFair Desfire or CIOS, you know, the reader supports both. When you look at mobile platform options that we're gonna talk about here in a second from NFC or Bluetooth, the, the reader supports both. So it's a way as, as campuses are looking to upgrade their infrastructure and protect their investments, you know, having a reader that, that goes on the wall that doesn't make you choose right out the bat, uh, something that maybe the decision is, is a year down the line, but these readers are going on the wall can accommodate your existing uh, legacy technology like Prox and then support, you know, the latest and greatest uh, when, when you're ready to get there. Brings us to mobile access, uh, just, this is just to hit the highlights of what HID mobile access, it's really four parts. It's the, the HID Arigo mobile identities platform itself. It's the mobile IDs. It's our SDK that allows some integration to you know many different areas and then it's the readers themselves that are actually you know, uh, accepting, that, accepting that credential. You'll hear the two main things are for mobile platforms is Bluetooth. So you can see it as tap or twist and go. Usually tap is more of a, is used in a close, close range. Um, you know, whether it's a, a inside door turn style, 
those type of things. And then you'll see twist and go where we've seen you use cases for parking, uh, ADA compliance at universities or anywhere where you want a little bit longer read range. Uh, Bluetooth offers a, a great use case for, for those, those areas. Uh, we get obviously NFC or is the student ID and Apple wallet program. I'm not sure how familiar the audience uh, is with with the program. It's been released now about, I believe about 18 months. And basically what it allows you to do is issue an HID uh, mobile credential that is stored in the, in the Apple wallet for anyone that's familiar with it, with an iPhone. It leverages the same element as, as the payment and transit cards in Apple Pay. It provides a fantastic uh, user experience. Um, there's low reserve battery modes where basically if the, if the phone is, if the phone has a dead battery, it, it will still work. Um, you know, I've, I'm not, I've seen it in person and it works just like you would, you know, use it, use an Apple pay. It's, it's, uh, it's a very, very strong user experience. And, and, um, if we have some questions on, we can get in a little bit more, more detail on this topic. Um, so this brings us to the reader and I'm looking for something I wrote down to share. Can't seem to find it. Um, so we get this questions a lot is campuses come and say, what, what do we need from a hardware and infrastructure standpoint to accommodate what we're using today? And then what we may use in the future via a secure credential or mobile. So meet Signo and I'm not sure how many folks have, have seen this, but we released this uh, new signature line of readers at the end of Q1, the end of March, uh, 2020. Um, so really it's security meets modernization. It has a new sleek design. Um, it's gonna help the organizations meet security needs for, for now and in the future. It's highly versatile. I mentioned this before. It has unparalleled support for the number of credentials it can accommodate. Uh, it includes a natively Bluetooth uh, and NFC and includes the ECP, which is needed or called enhanced contact, uh, contactless polling, which is needed for any uh, deployments of the student ID and Apple wallet projects. Uh, comes with OSDP, uh, it has Different, um, and Paul, if you're on here, feel free to jump in on any of the signal. Um, has an IP65 rating, so it's native outdoor rating. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, Tim, I mean, I, I know, I don't know which all universities are represented, but I know some of the universities more than other vertical markets are sometimes, correct me if I'm wrong, guys on the phone, but are a little bit more involved and in maybe hands-on with the installation, do some of the installation and maintenance of readers, maybe in other vertical markets. So I think, it's worth highlighting, should anyone be in that position on this call, that we took into account the aesthetics of the reader, right? Also the design, wanted to make improvements uh, as far as packing everything in the reader to enable you as an end user, whether or not you need, we'll tell you whether or not you need OS to be today. You buy a reader, you don't have to make those decisions today and you don't have to change, pay a different price uh, accordingly or get a different. Um, so part of the installation process, which is easier, I'll give an example. You know, Tim is talking about best practices and moving away from prox, which is securing that communication uh, between the credential and the reader. Uh, but uh, between the reader and, say, the Mercury panel, uh, there's what's called Wigan, there's what's called OSDP. And I may be pre who's all on here. Um, but with these signal readers, Tim mentioned there's a, a module on there supports OSDP, but you can buy that reader today. Um, with Wigan on the back end, but you want to move to OSDP, which is a more secure, encrypted communication from the reader to the panel later. Later, you'll actually be able to go into access it into the PAC software and actually flip the switch from there and never even present a configuration card, never use a mobile app to make the change. Literally install the reader once on the wall, 
And then you can flip that switch here in a couple months. We would flip the switch right from the head end and never rewind. So things like that that just make the installation leader to, easier. Tim mentioned IP65, so no need for additional gasket. You know, um, there's things you've done so you don't need spacers as often. So we've done a lot from an installation standpoint. Uh, I think it's that's very helpful. Yeah, and just the way with technology, you know, upgrades and things change over the years. You know, it's just you know, it's just a redesigned product that's been tweaked and, and upgraded to to meet the ever changing needs, you know, of customers all across, you know, our different vertical markets. So very powerful. You know, we encourage you to to test these readers. You know, talk to talk with ours too. Talk with your partners. Um, you know, to to get these in hands and, and see what you think of them as well. The other, uh, the other main point when you look at reader infrastructure is really all readers outside of the physical access control. So when you look at your campus, one of the, the I think it was the first slide that I had about reimagining the access control experience. So when you talk about moving to a secure credential, again, whether it's a card or with mobile, you know, look at your campus and where are all the different use cases, copy and print, vending, uh, point of sale. This reader down here at the bottom is called an OmniKey reader, but these readers come out of the box supporting both Bluetooth and NFC. They include the, uh, the e Apple ECP for the Student ID and Apple Wallet program. They can support CIOS and Desfire along with other technologies. And then the, the, two, the two pictures here on the bottom right, you know, they can also be these chips and modules kind of miniaturized in a sense, but can be integrated into hundreds of non pack solutions out there. So time and attendance terminals, you know, and pretty much anything out there where you would want to take a card, you know, there's we have a uh, a division within HID called Extended Access Technologies where they work with those third party vendors to to put our modules in those devices to accommodate the card or, or mobile platforms. So it's this is always an important um, topic to think about outside of the physical access control when you look at your university uh, vision and projects. Paul, anything to add there? No, other than I say, I think it is important, you know, and I think, Kim, you're going to get into this uh, and reinforce this later. But when you're looking at, say, you're in a position where you're proxy and want to go to see us, you know, we're here to help. RC is here to help. HGD is here to help channel partners to kind of plan that roadmap. And really, what are the use cases you're using car for? So we don't we don't overlook any of those nuances. I think it's important. So to Tim's point, we have several hundred, uh, what to call it, embedded access technology support our credential technology. So um, obviously there, there's there's gotchas in there in that, you know, if it's a really old Kronos time and attendance system, it may not have the right module in, but there's there's a, a large variety of options. So um, when you want to look at those components as you're planning the migration. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. And I'm going through some of this kind of quick, trying to hit a lot of topics at a high level to allow time to to get questions and, and obviously Jeff's going to be going to be talking here too. So um, I'm hoping, you know, this is this isn't too fast and, and making sense for everybody. The other thing I uh, really wanted to just touch on, I'm, I'm speaking to higher education institutions all the time and obviously with the virus and everything that happened, we're getting a lot of uh, asks and requests just about tracking uh, and what we refer to as real-time location services or RTLS. And when we look at RTLS, it's been around for, for really a long time, a, over a decade or so. Uh, the costs are starting to come, to come down. But what we're seeing in higher education now is schools are trying to figure out how do they how do they manage occupancy in a library? How do they manage occupancy in a card office? You know, how do they support social dif distancing efforts? Um, those type of, of conversations, they wanna be able to monitor or, or even contact tracing, like how do we know if someone got, came in contact with a sick, sick person? So this is, a, a, I would say, a new area of 
interest and um, direction for universities that probably wasn't, you know, being discussed a number of months ago. Uh, location services with big, with big in healthcare, biomed, you know, those type of things and, and certain spe specialized uh, verticals, but it's starting to, to gain more momentum in, in higher education. I'd be curious if uh, any of the campuses that are on the phone that are, are looking to, to learn more about this in detail. Um, I personally have been on dozens of calls uh, over the past couple months where this keeps coming up. Um, so I just wanted to at least mention it. And when you think about real-time location services and the physical access control, they're really a perfect match. So, you know, the why from physical access control, you know, control where somebody goes into a building, you know, the what is the access control system, and then the how is the credential reader, and then, then the workstation. So with location services, it's very, very familiar as far as the type of uh, products and services needed. So typically it's a beacon, you know, similar to a card. There's a gateway similar to a reader, and then there's a dashboard uh, to provide the, the data and the analytics. So, you know, there's ways to pair and match, you know, these type of solutions together to give you a give you a full encompassing solution you know that that helps meet any of your new future uh, guidelines or security policies uh, just an example you know from badging to geofencing monitoring and alerts those type of things uh, we heard an example of say a you wanted to lock down or track occupancy, let's just say in a library, for example. So everybody that comes in is handed a one of these beacons or badges because everyone's carrying an I, ID card um, right now. So they use that beacon throughout the their time in the library. If they ever got too you know close or were in a in a pack or not employing social distancing guidelines somebody could be you know sent over there to either educate them or you know tell them to to find other spots they leave for the day before they leave they drop the badge off for it to be sanitized and clean and be ready ready for the next day so there's all different examples and use cases it probably depends you know what institution is, is looking for but just know that these solutions are out there and um you know we're, we're willing and, and able to have those discussions with you if, if if interested paul let me pause there anything to add on that no i i no, sorry i was just going to be no I don't, I don't think so i mean i think you know broadly we are seeing a lot of interest uh less contact is good <laughs> so a lot of conversations um, regarding the solution. I don't think there's anything I need to. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think the, the way the way some of these. Um, this is Isam, by the way. Um, is um, rolling out for for higher education, uh, especially in the in the in the vertical of or in the space of what you mentioned at the beginning. I'm already using my phone for everything, and I'm already um, uh, basically using that for everything from the cafeteria to the to the my uh, picture to the library. <laughs> um, being able to kind of um, utilize that universe that's already captivating most of the university students etc to not turn it around to add some layers of security and ease of access but as well as to control so much that um, is going to make it easier in the fall uh, as reopening occurs how to plan for it um, is going to become something very 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 interesting um, i'd like to also introduce at this uh, at this point too just for the group, um, Jeff Bransfield, our national sales manager, will help kind of tie some of this stuff together for, for what we're doing over on our access to universal side too for you guys. Um, and all your dealers can help um, kind of bridge the gap between where you are now and where you might need to be for, for this stuff. Um, Jeff? He might have himself on mute, but Tim, I'll let you keep going until Jeff yeah. and gets back on. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Uh, just a couple more slides, um, really, to bring it full circle around like best. So, you know, okay, we've identified 
you know, we have legacy technology, you know, we do want to begin migration. We want to upgrade our infrastructure to support convenience and security. So what are the, some of the best practices? So break it down to really six crucial steps. And number one, I think is extremely important is assess your hardware. And it's, it really means to amass a complete schedule of every application of that infrastructure that exists. You know, what make and models, how many access control uh, systems do I have? I've had schools where they have like 11 different access control companies uh, or systems on a, on a campus. You know, how many readers are deployed? What is the make and model of that? Who runs my uh, physical access or uh, not physical access? Who runs my point of sale? You know, who are the who are the integrators and in those and the manufacturers involved that becomes extremely important because you don't know what, what you can go to until you know what you have uh, number two is identifying a champion this is a, a extremely valuable i've been on a number of uh, end user presentations and for schools that have have made some some great leaps uh, from a technology innovation standpoint, they identify this as, as one of the main drivers is identifying a champion. So, you know, there's always going to be hurdles, whether it's fun, funding issues, um, just legacy infrastructure, cultural resistance, a highly placed advocate can really help push, push that change and help, you know, support the, the executive sponsorship from the top, get stakeholder buy-in, another really important point is bring everybody to the table who's using your card who would be using a mobile device you know bring, bring everybody to the table get input you know how would this uh, new technology affect affect their particular department and their and their staff you know i think it's very uh it's it shows a lot of um It just shows a lot of forthright with the with the schools to bring everybody together and just make sure everybody's on the same page and there's no surprises you know once you've done that establish a standard try to support as few legacy technologies as possible you know look for solutions that are going to support mobile access and then you know even start small execute ex ex a successful pilot maybe at one site repeat and then when you get into the five and six, you know, upgrading the infrastructure and replacing the credentials uh, obviously come, comes important and looking at the plans, whether that's, you know, can, it, can you do it as a, as a one-time initiative? Do you have to do it over a period of time and then blending the type of credentials with multi-tech credentials, whether it's a prox and CIOS or mobile, those type of things and how you're gonna get there. We can talk about best practices. It, it kind of reiterates some of the stuff we just talked about, but um, it's it becomes very beneficial to the schools that I've seen move forward in this space um, following some some of these guidelines. The, the site survey and the inventory is is really important. The legacy technology. So why support Magstripe on campus if you if you don't have to? You know, you're putting up a new building. No reason to be buying readers that support Mag unless there's you know a, a specific reason. You know, so buying uh, infrastructure that supports multiple card card types, multiple mobile platforms, and those type of things. And then the last slide before I, before I uh, kick it over to Jeff is you know really what changes in in post COVID. This is what I've been on a number of webinars too from other schools and everybody's asking these questions. So what changes um, post COVID? I think there's a number of topics here with mobile credentials is, is being one. You know, they're gonna look to increase social distancing, uh, occupancy restrictions, general policy and security. But, you know, so the students have been dem demanding mobile anyways. Campuses have been looking how to upgrade infrastructure. Mobile now provides another value added benefit that probably wasn't on top of mind six months ago. You can, you have the ability to issue credentials digitally over the air. So students don't have to come to a card office or take part in large uh, gatherings. They can use their device, you know, for, for everything from payments where they don't have to hand a card, whether it's a, a contactless or swipe to, to a, an attendant to pay for something. So you're having that that contactless or touchless transaction. And then security is always a big factor. You can enable these devices to, 
or enable the solutions to use two two factor dual factor authentication. Students are logging in with a biometric already. Um, whether it's facial iris, so it's adding another layer of protection. They're not they're highly unlikely to to hand their phones, um, you know, to their buddies or significant others uh, like they would a card. And then we touched on the the topics earlier on occupancy occupancy management and contact tracing. I think user experience and security are gonna gonna blend and coexist. You know, they're for the schools that have adopted mobile um, on a on a high volume. You know, they they talk about the user experience that the students love it and the demand for it. So user experience has to co coexist with the security. And then finally, we're seeing a, a big push around university branded apps. So universities are using these apps to engage and communicate with their students. So these apps are doing everything for campuses, you know, providing schedules, uh, emergency contact information, you know, food options, you know, you name it. And mobile access can be uh, integrated into those into those university apps as a branded image. Mobile sits in the background, providing the privileges and services to get in, inside and pay inside buildings and pay for meals. But the brand is what the students and staff see and it just sits in the background. So I think these are a lot of the different topics that you're gonna see, you know, uh, continue to, to take shape and talked about more and more as everybody gets back to campus. Tim, just a couple things to add. I think that's, I agree, that's all good. Um, something, I don't know if you touched it or not, Tim, but something to consider um, is we do, what's common with a lot of universities work with, and perhaps you had this engage with HID. You know, if you are, when you get to the place and you do um, a rebadging effort of, of your students, um, that's something, you know, you can certainly, ours to your partner in HID on uh, that's that's a service you know we could provide um if you do a quick turn um Tim in particular he has a lot of experience in that uh both you know HID and his previous <laughs> previous life um so that is something that's very common practice especially the larger the universities where we can help and assist in the actual rebadge you know you know do the graphics and everything on the cards for you and we've done a number of those with ours too um so just something else to, to keep in mind um, that can make that journey, that cut over a little bit easier for you. Thanks, gentlemen. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff Bransfield, our national sales manager, to put some insights in um, for everyone here, too. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Hopefully, everybody. Okay. Uh, am, I, am I coming through all right? Yeah, you're coming okay. Okay, thank you. No, I, I appreciate everybody jumping in. Uh, Tim, thank you very much for the over uh, overview. And Paul, thanks for joining. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I really want to echo everything that, that Tim was saying about the migration path and the, the use of, um, you know, the, the trends are different now. You know, the, this pandemic has really opened people's eyes to, you know, let's leverage the identity uh, and, and use the technology that's out there to be able to manage and, and control that identity. So, you know, with, with, with our team at RS2 and all of our integration partners and all of our integrator partners, um, you know, our common goals have, have really been to, to bring everything together um, through collaborating different systems together, leveraging the technologies that are out there, um, and, and really kind of taking advantage of the abilities to, you know, connect everything together. And, and very, very much a part of that is becoming you know, mobile identity, and and we're seeing a very large uptick um, in you know the adoption rate of mobile, the migration of the reader technology, obviously from a from a you know non secure technology to a more secure um, you know platform as well through the use of OSDP and and uh, you know smart card deployment. So, you know, it's it's kind of nice you know seeing these trends and and seeing it actually come through. It's it's not just a you know, let's get ahead of it for, for future proofing anymore. It's, it's really leveraging, you know, what we can do and, and the data that we can get now um, to, to use in the environment for, for multiple needs. You know, it's, it's outside of security's hands now. 
Um, I mean, <laughs> they're still going to make you do it. Don't 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 get me wrong, but you know the the data that's being collected is being analyzed. Um, you know, for, for other need uh, now through through the pandemic. So it, it's really been fun to leverage, you know, all of the different integration partners that we have, uh, especially, you know, the great team that we have behind us at HID um, through, you know, through the Mercury platform as well as HID, the features and credentials, um, with, the, you know, all of the, the options that we're seeing on, on higher ed. I mean, this, this is one of our largest verticals that, that we at RS2 really play in. And, and so, you know, we get out there and we're having a lot of these conversations about how do we move forward, um, you know, in the most efficient manner. So, you know, I, I really kind of would, would love to hear some open-ended questions with you guys on, on what the challenges are that you're facing now. I mean, I've talked to several of our higher ed customers that, you know, have been given some green lights that, you know, we're going back, right? Uh, is, is that getting more widespread? you know, across the different regions. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, different people are having some feels, but I, I want to know how we can help this go back to work, um, you know, movement that, that we need to push forward with and, and how we can leverage the systems that can be put in place to do so. If anyone would like to um, chime in, you can um, unmute yourself on the, um, on the WebEx, or you can go ahead and put it into the chat. Um, and we'll be happy to kind of take take the feedback that you have, the insights that you you have, and and ground realities that you're facing um, with a potential return um, of students into the campus. I know some campuses are actually even opening limited to for the summer as well. So, does that, anyone have any questions or would like to bring up anything to uh, Jeff, Tim, or Paul while they're here? And, and while people are thinking, <clears throat> yeah, I'll throw something out there just for conversation that maybe. Um, sorry, somebody's calling me in Teams while I'm trying to talk here. <laughs> people these days, I got my Teams. Up and everything. Gosh, have mercy. <clears throat> Is you know, Tim talked about kind of the methodology, right, to go through when you're looking at your campus. One is kind of recognizing and taking inventory of what you have, and if there's vulnerabilities, I call I call proxies have a known vulnerability in your network. Yeah. Paul, are you talking? I, yeah, I think we lost you there a little bit. I am talking. Can you hear me or no? Yeah, you're, it right. is, it, you're back now. <clears throat> I think when the teams came in, it, it interrupted my talking. So, um, so I don't really heard, but basically, Tim, you, you know, you walk through kind of the methodology and kind of the logic and putting together a plan. Um, in one kind of, you know, inventory of what you have in place. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of universities that um, there's one particular one in the Northeast, uh, and they were using Prox. And the unfortunate thing that happened there is they actually had Prox uh, protecting uh, their server room. And uh, what happened then is, you know, the person, somebody in the car, actually somebody related to one of the, the leaders in the university, which made it, and got in and started taking data off the server. So, I mean, there are very real applications. So. Um, you know, take a look at what your inventory, what you have in place, and then there's there. So, <clears throat> so some people might be saying, well, I don't actually have, but maybe I can't just, you know, rip and replace everything overnight. Well, I would suspect most universities can't. So Tim presented, you know, a reader first option. You can replace readers, upgrade them to the latest, and then later rebatch. But we universities, actually, it's pretty common in hybrid space. Um, they have a natural rebatch cycle, right? With students graduating, et cetera. Maybe staff are more constant. So some universities look at kind of a, another option. Let, let me do a, like a card with more than one technology on it, rebadge over you know a few years, and then replace your readers. Um, another approach, if you are in a position where say you're a little bit more limited, where you've seen customers get creative, is okay. I, I have you know how many how many entry points are like you know. Con five, like mission critical, you cannot have a compromise. I think of like an IT room or a server room being an example. And then we've had some uh, some entities in that case issue a multi tech card or a secondary credential, and then on those, so dozen or so or a couple dozen doors, put a reader that only supports you know newer security. So they basically identify the pain points, the most highest risk points, just patch those holes, and then later over time. 
they 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 build out those layers across campus. So there's a lot of ways you know you can you can approach the technology migration, and um, so happy to engage if you guys have any questions on how to do that in your particular. Yeah, and, and one and one thing I was I was saving to to touch this on the end just from HID side. Um, and we you know we've shared this with RS too, but HID has actually put in a basically a program. Uh, for higher education institutions, knowing some of the challenges um, from upgrade and, and legacy infrastructure that universities face, and for discounts on readers, cards, and, and even mobile. And this actually was being put in place before COVID, and then COVID hit, and you know we, everybody knows what what happened with that. Um, so the program really has just been rolled out, but the the main goal is to work with the universities and provide some discounts, you know, on what you need to upgrade your infrastructure and take advantage of some of the latest and greatest card technology. So that would apply to things like new signal readers or even our pre, our other line, the iClass SE, with with a, a Bluetooth reader to support. The mobile platform, uh, CIOS and Desfire, and uh, we we recently just reached uh, released a mobile promotion as well. Um, we're providing half off off discounts on the mobile promotion. So um, you know, as a follow up, I would encourage anyone that wants to talk about this in more detail. Um, you know, we'd love to have those conversations, but know there's some pretty significant uh, savings opportunities out there uh, for university customers uh, to take advantage of upgrading the infrastructure. By now, HID's on sale, right? <laughs> no, it's not a used car ad. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and just to kind of add, add on that, and Tim, thank you for saying that. Yeah, we're 100% we're behind this program, this initiative. We want to make it as, as easy as possible to migrate. Um, so, you know, make sure that if, if this is something you guys are, are looking at and thinking through, um, you know, there, there's a lot of incentives right now to, to really take some action, you know, obviously if that's capable for you guys. So, you know, reach out to your integrator, your RS2, RSM, um, you know, have the conversations, let's get some inventory and, and at least see what it looks like, right? You know, it, it doesn't hurt to at least, you know, put the budgets together and, and see what we're talking about. So. We, we also have some pretty exciting, um, you know, enhancements on the Access Universal side of the, you know, through our software integrations. We're, we're working daily on, you know, new integrations through HID and Mercury to support uh, a lot more functionality to be able to push through the UI uh, with OSCP. So a lot more commands, uh, a lot more configuration possibilities there. Um, you know, our team is, is really diving into, you know, the use of reader manager, uh, being able to, to set up custom configuration, you know, it, you know, custom AV, you know, responses, et cetera, uh, with, with the readers configuration need. Uh, but we're also very, very deep into integration with, uh, you know, the Arigo platform from HID for the mobile integration. Um, so we're, we're currently writing to their uh, SDK so that you know we can have you know one step integration to the mobile you know identity. So for issuance of a mobile credential through the Access at Universal plan, um, that that's on our our roadmap for our next major release. So we're really excited about that. Um, having the ability to to manage that credential through the UI and not you know basically eliminate that you know second step um, that that was needed in the past. So. We're, we're really excited about that. There's some other things that are going to kind of layer into that. We've talked about, you know, even building out one of our university clients has, has asked us uh, to, to build out a, a self-request kiosk, right? Um, the, the student can come up, you know, completely contactless. There's no human interaction. Come up to a kiosk, read their physical badge, right, their student ID at this kiosk and request a mobile credential to be sent. Uh, to their email or, you know, you know, text or however they want to consume it. So, you know, things like that are really, you know, they're, they're all doable. It's, it's neat ideas to think through 
you know, how do I want to deploy these technologies? So uh, we're, we're really excited. I know Paul really wants me to say that that'll be ready in July, but, you know, I, I, can't, I can't lie, Paul. So we're, we're looking, uh, you know, beginning of the year. Is that because it's in June? You don't want to lie? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I can, I can commit to a yeah. Q, 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 I can commit to a start of a quarter, just not the next one. So <laughs> we're, uh, we're 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 trying to get it in by the end of the year. Um, so you know, it's a obviously development schedule. So you know, if if Bob heard me committing to a date on a webinar, he'd uh, he'd be a little uh, unhappy with me. So <laughs> thanks, Jeff. The good thing, the good thing here is there's there's innovation, there's there's um, movement on making it easier to adopt the technology, and there's more things coming down the pipeline that will continue to make it easier. So the number one conversation to take away really is going to be uh, once you're looking at making a process um, a workflow for having uh, people come back into your spaces. Your first call is going to be to an RSM or or, or uh, your dealers even to talk about how can we look at what's out there in, in these spaces to make this unified access possible um, and what else is kind of what else is there to make this universe more connected um, and simpler, especially when considering what happened with COVID-19 and other incidents here um, in the past month. I mean, 2020 has just kind of really uh, opened up everyone's eyes to okay, something can go, something can go wrong. It's probably going to happen all at once. <laughs> so how do you, how do you quickly um, take, take the action that you need to take to make sure everyone is safe, uh, but at the same time, you're, you're also maintaining a semblance of control and data to ensure that, you no, know, come what may, you don't have to close again because you, you've got, you've got plenty in, in control, plenty of data in your hand, uh, in your hands and capabilities in your hand to ensure that you can make the pivot really quickly to ensure that everyone can stay safe and you can stay open because you have the protocols, processes, procedures, and the automation and technology in place um, to actually back that up. Um, again, open it up to the, the floor to everyone else um, on the call. If anyone does have any questions, anything they'd like to uh, have, di uh, have us dive into, or uh, a unique case that they're dealing with in your, your in your own space, um, please do share via chat or feel free to un, uh, hit the unmute button on your mic um, and chime in. We'd love to hear your feedback um, and see what you're dealing with um, in the next few minutes that we do have together. If not, Jeff, um, Tim, um, and Paul, are there any other insights that you can provide uh, that you think are fruitful for everyone uh, and beneficial for them? Yeah, one of the things that I'll share is we. I think the cost conversation comes up a lot around around mobile, and you know everybody knows it's an investment, but is it worth it and why? And what I've what I've been or as I listen to universities and for the the, the universities that have deployed mobile on a large scale, you know, what I've seen is, you know, universities are catering to the students, obviously. They're demanding mobile. And I think some form of mobile, whether it's a campus-wide solution or limited use cases, it's ine inevitable on a campus. You know, the value propositions discussions always come up. And I think it goes beyond the standard convenience and modernization that mobile provides. And there's really three kind of key areas now. They, they reference student experience. They said other, I've seen other institutions who are investing are doing so primarily to satisfy the student demand of enhancing that student experience. You know, in doing so, they are creating some operational efficiencies through like digital processes and enhancing security, you know, et cetera but they're getting commitments from senior leadership to make this a priority and allocate, you know, the necessary budget. But however, I've, we've seen that the primary, primary added value is around the student experience. Then you get to the cost. So, you know, we recognize this and understand there's gonna be a period of time where mobile and technology cards coexist on most campuses. You know, there's, we understand the, significant infrastructure upgrades, the ongoing support and service investment, the investment in mobile costs, then there, but you got to look at their other card issuant costs that vary greatly by institution, card printers, consumables, labor, et cetera, that have, that 
are taken into consideration. When you look at a card, a lot of a lot of universities classify it as a consumable. You know, it's a, it's typically allocated in maybe a certain operational budget. You know, you're ordering cards and ribbons and those type of things. And with mobile, it really goes beyond a consumable as there's a cloud service infrastructure behind the scenes, there's technology, there's security, and there's all kinds of things basically help managing that identity um, from a from a cloud service point of view. And then, you know, also when you look at COVID now, it 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 provides another value added benefit. I mentioned it earlier that no one probably really thought about. And, you know, we're having discussions with universities and while they know mobile is coming, they're looking at ways how to speed it up. Thanks, um, something that I'll share on the screen for everyone's benefit too. I put into that, um, there is an article on campus uh, safety magazine. Um, that um, has some thought leadership ideas and, and some, uh, some insights on future of access to technology in higher education. Um, authored by Jeff Bransfield, uh, our very own. So take a take a look um, at that um, because that'll also kind of go through some of the some of the areas that we're kind of touched on here. As a follow up to this, we will send out an email that'll talk a little bit more about the technology, so you have something downloadable um, that you can share with your with your colleagues, as well as get you some information about um, about the promotions available and how to how to talk to your dealers about getting that up and uh, up and moving for yourselves. Once you're ready for that, but in the meantime, um, some of the stuff that's uh, shared here today, as well as it's on the article, will kind of help um, amplify the conversations a little bit. Um, and feel free, even if there's no questions today, feel free once you start to think about how, about cap security and how to kind of look through that. By all means, give us um, give us a shout, and we'll be happy to go through that at any time with you guys. Jeff, did you have anything in closing you'd like to add at all? Uh, no, not unless there's any, uh, you know, comments, questions, you know, feel free. Esam, if you want to, you know, share my email address and, and direct extension, feel free to do so if anybody wants to reach out and, you know, just talk through ideas or, you know, wish list items. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Excellent. I'll put that in as a, in a part of the follow-up email everyone will get. Um, contact information directly to Jeff. Call him at two in the morning. He has the best ideas. At two in the morning. Um, but uh, if there are no questions, I do re really appreciate everyone jumping on. Paul, Tim, your time to share some of the insights um, and uh, some cool technology that's out there now that um, can actually help our higher education teams uh, remain open and um, usher in some new era of technology that can really unify things out there. Um, if anyone does think of something that comes up later, we will have some contact information shared for everyone in, in a follow-up email. And this webinar will be live uh, on demand, actually available at rs2university.com. We have a number of webinars that are available out there you can look at um, at any time that are on demand. Feel free to head, out, uh, head over to RS2 University and take a look at some of those um, webinars and how they tie into your space as needed. This will be live uh, within, probably by tomorrow, we'll have it up uh, for everyone's benefit for someone who couldn't join and you want to share the information with them. My name is Isam Chaudhary again, and I thank you all for joining. On behalf of Paul, Tim from HID, um, and all of us here at RS2, have a really good rest of the week and uh, weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, all. Mm -hmm.